Hi, I'm Father Roderick, the Star Wars priest, and today I want to uh, give you my analysis of the new trailer for Solo, A Star Wars Story. Solo is uh, the second standalone Star Wars movie, as you know, following Rogue One. And this time we go back in time, even before the events of Rogue One, and we see a young Han Solo, a young Lando Calrissian, a young Chewie, although I think Wookiees are very old in general, so I don't know if we see any difference between the, the Wookiee that we know and the Wookiee that we will see in this movie. Now, the trailer came after a teaser, or actually the trailer is a teaser trailer, according to the official Star Wars channel, uh, and we got a small preview during the Super Bowl. Uh, that was just 45 seconds, but it showed different scenes, and I'll go into some of the extra footage that we've seen in that particular teaser trailer after I, I've analyzed the uh, the official first trailer for the solo movie. So it opens with uh, uh, some details, and we see Han, I assume it's Han, uh, switching on the Falcon. He is uh, using all the different levers and switches. And what I immediately loved about this trailer was the rhythmic editing. So you hear this click, clack click clock and you see his hand switching on the various devices or on the on the dashboard um what strikes me immediately is that the chair on the right side of han is empty so that means there's no co-pilot yet uh chewy is not yet part of the story at this point um we also see that han is carrying a big what looks like a very big bulky watch almost like a, a super old-fashioned version of, of the Apple Watch. Um, so it's chunky. It could also be a communicator, something that he uses to, I don't know, make phone calls? I don't know how that works in the Star Wars universe. So that's the first thing. We just see the hands, but we immediately know this is the Falcon, and this must be Han. Now, the dashboard itself looks also slightly different. Keep in mind, this is the Falcon that we see in its brand new state. Later on in the video, we will see more proof of that. So the, the dashboard is still pristine uh, the way it looked when it, uh, when it came out of the factory. I don't know if these things come out of a uh, factory, but anyway. And the, the big difference is that instead of the three levers that are in the center, you, so between the, the, the pilots, those are the levers that you, you push to go into hyperspace, um, instead of the three that we know, there are now four levers, and they also look slightly different. So that, that's a big difference. Um, and then you hear the sound of a, kind of a, like a motorbike, electric guitar, kind of roaring sound um, when, while we see the, the Lucasfilm logo on screen. And that is a... That is a sound that we haven't heard yet in the Star Wars universe. It's, this, is, this has not been part of the musical lingo of the Star Wars movies. But this roaring motorbike sound immediately evokes youth. It evokes, uh, I don't know, a road adventure. It's, it's like, this is different from what you're used to. Um, the rest of the music, by the way, let's get that out of the way, during the trailer, is uh, probably composed specifically for this trailer. And... I didn't like it that much. I thought it sounded cheap. It's clearly a synthesizer. It is not a real or orchestra. And it sounded, I don't know, it just didn't have the punch of previous trailer music that, that we've heard. Um, but that's just my kind of initial impression. But it works okay. I mean, it, it's, it, 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 it's serviceable. But I just expected something a little bit more special, a bit more, I don't know, symphonic. But anyway, so we get that that sound like, oh, and a road adventure is starting, and immediately that's what we see. We see an early model land speeder. I'll just call, call it a land speeder. It's this hovering kind of car. Um, and it is, everything looks clunky about it. It looks really old fashioned and retro. And it's leaving what looks like a garage or a hangar or something like that. And then we, we, we see a close up of the people behind the wheel, as it were. You have Han Solo. And then you have this girl, and I think it's Kira, but a younger Kira, and also Han, kind of, it's almost as if this is a flashback. And now there is this detail, and you may have missed it, because there's so much that wants your attention in this trailer. But if you freeze frame this scene, you will see the golden dice that we see in The Last Jedi. 
that Luke's, uh, Luke gives to Leia at the end of his uh, appearance there, you see the golden dice hanging from the window of of the car, which immediately tells me that this is not just a car that was stolen by Han. No, this is probably his vehicle. This is his his hover car or however you want to call it. Um, but I thought it was so cool to see the dice because, you know, the story of the dice is that um, when Ryan Johnson was filming The Last Jedi, that was even when uh, The Force Awakens was still being edited. And in The Force Awakens, there is a cut scene that ended up on the cutting room floor, which involved those dice. And he thought it was amazing. And so he brought back that, that moment with the dice um, in The Last Jedi. But unfortunately, since that particular scene was cut from The Force Awakens, that moment falls flat. And in a way, what I love is that with this uh, movie, they can still tell the story of those dice and why they are so important. So this, I think, in retrospect, will give more weight to that scene in which Luke is handing over the golden dice of Han Solo to Leia. So I thought it was very cool. So... Um, what is what's happening there? It looks a bit like a joyride, or they're on the run. Um, there's clearly a pursuit going on. Han is wearing this leather jacket. It's very different from the clothes that we see later on in uh, in, in the trailer. Uh, and you you hear a voiceover, which is kind of very Han Solo, Harrison Ford like. Uh, if you you may know that in Blade Runner, in one of the many different versions of Blade Runner. It starts with his voiceover. Now, this is probably just taken from a conversation between him and Kira, in which he's telling her about his youth. Uh, but here it's used as a voiceover. And it doesn't really sound like Harrison Ford, but it's okay. Um, it, it, we hear that he's been on the street since the age of 10, um, that he was kicked from Flight Academy for having a mind of his own. So immediately the trailer wants to establish this is a rogue guy. This is a scoundrel, you know. He, he doesn't fit the mold. And we see glimpses of his past at the Flight Academy in the Super Bowl trailer that I will talk about later on. So it's clearly something that we that is going to be part of this movie, probably in flashback. We will just see how he applies for this Flight Academy and then gets kicked off. But now he is in this pursuit uh, and he's being chased by uh, another hovering vehicle it looks a bit like a like a police motorbike um, there is a a guard or a trooper on it uh, looks a bit like a security or a police guy um, and the rest of the scene is clearly an industrial environment and later on we'll discover that this takes place at a harbor so um, the I don't know why he's being pursued. Is it just because he's speeding and he's driving rec uh, recklessly? Or uh, perhaps he stole something or uh, who knows? There may be other reasons for him being in trouble. The The fact is he's on the run. Um, then we get a quick shot of the dashboard of the land speeder. And we can immediately see that even though the, the, the outside of the vehicle looks a bit clunky and old fashioned, it's still a, almost like a race car. Um, the dashboard looks very smooth and cool. And then there is a, another nice detail on the right side of the of the dashboard. There is a, a a small monitor that looks a bit like the aiming computer of Luke Skywalker in his X-wing when he's going to blow up the Death Star. And it's visually, it's got the same type of computer graphics, which. I love those details. It's, it's uh, immediately signal, signaling us this takes place in the Star Wars universe. Um, now, the, the, the chase uh, goes on. The security bike crashes into an object. And uh, we see that the, the guard or the trooper is, is uh, ejected out of his uh, vehicle and lands on the, on the ground, but survives. In, in, in just a fraction of a second, we see him get up. So... Nobody dies here in this scene. Um, then we see like a more of an open uh, view of the harbor. We see water in the distance. We see that now seemingly uh, Han and Kira are being chased by another, a bigger vehicle. Um, and then it changes. All of a sudden, and it, this is like a real strange moment in the trailer where we see this kind of almost like a Lord of the Rings type of 
of uh, flying sequins and we fly over snowy mountain tops. And I was like, okay, if, if we now hear the music of the Lord of the Rings, then that would be totally weird. But this is a new environment, which is very predominant in the trailer. So it may also be very important in the movie. Uh, it's a wintry planet. It's cold. And also this planet seems to be a, kind of an industrial planet. And uh, my guess is that this is Kessel. Kessel is the place where you have the spice mines that uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO, or mostly C-3PO, talks about. You know, we're going to be sent to the spice mines of Kessel. Um, and we know, we have seen a glimpse of the spice mine, or yeah, of the spice mines and of Kessel in the first episode, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, 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 the Star Wars Rebels, an animated series. But we haven't seen much. We know about Kessel. Some stuff from the uh, old expanded universe, that it is a planet where uh, both people are working as slaves in the mines and spice is, well, not spices you use for cooking, but it's more like drugs. And Whereas on the other side of the planet, the royal family lives in luxury. So you've got this same type of opposition that we saw in The Last Jedi on the casino planet, where you have all these rich people that made their money because of the sales of weapons. Well, here it's kind of sim a similar situation on Kessel. Of course, this is all still speculation, but it's kind of setting the, the scene for a very important environment in, in the solo movie. So um, let's say that there are, we're now on Kessel, and we see Han uh, in a fur coat that looks like a coat straight from, I don't know, Game of Thrones. It's clearly handmade, improvised, and he's just looking over the landscape. It's very empty. It's almost as if the trailer at this point tells us, well, this is how it got started. Han had all these dreams about being a, a, a pilot and everything. Uh, and now he's alone. He's literally solo in that, in that particular scene. This is all subconscious messaging that the trailer does. So the, Han is alone and it's cold. His life has no warmth, has no fulfillment. It's empty. It's nothing like the dream that he had. And of course, the trailer wants to tell us what's going to happen next. So uh, there is a, another abrupt switch. And all of a sudden, after the solo moment in the snow where everything seems frozen, we get to see the dream. We get to see the interior of the Millennium Falcon. And it is pristine and it's brand new. And the floor is like a mirror, like a black mirror. And the walls that we only know in it, their grimy uh, state much later in time are still looking fantastic. And you can totally tell that this is not just a, a cargo ship. This is a luxury ship. It looks amazing. And uh, so immediately we make the connection, Han Solo, the Falcon, this is this is what is going to happen. This is this is his dream. This is where he's going to end up. That's what he's going to pilot later on. Um, now we the next scene is interesting too. We see Han outside, it's still in his fur coat. So I assume this is still taking place on that same cold planet, perhaps also on Kessel. And he looks up at the cockpit. Um, and uh, if you freeze frame it. There's something else that's very interesting. You see two moons just above the cockpit. Or if it's a heavy snowstorm or whatever, or mist, could be two suns, but then I'd say that would be too close to Tatooine. So it's probably two moons. So this planet has two moons. Um, it is um, clearly not yet his uh, falcon. So uh, we then switch to another scene, very different environment. This is on a beach. Or it looks, it's a sandy landscape. Um, and you see in the distance, uh, Han probably with, I assume, Kira, but it's too small to, to really say. Um, and they're going in the direction of these, there's this strange uh, structure that emerges from the sand. Uh, it's unclear what it is, but it's, it's some kind of a building or a defense system. And then we switch to another uh, very important character played by Woody Harrelson. Um, and the name of that character is Beckett. And Beckett is supposed to be, according to the rumors, some kind of a tutor, some kind of a teacher to Han Solo. And that is what the trailer is going to tell us. This is probably the guy who is going to introduce Han to the world of smuggling, 
to the world of crime, <laughs> to the shady business. And what I loved about the, what happens in the trailer is that Woody turns towards Han and says, says hey, kid. It's exactly the same language that Han will later on adopt and use towards Luke Skywalker. Hey, kid. <laughs> and here's where he learns it. And we, we discover that uh, Beckett is assembling a team. That sounds like a heist movie. That sounds like, I don't know, Ocean's 8 or Ocean's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, and uh, he probably is recruiting not just Han, but also another uh, a number of other people to join his team. For what, we don't know. But from the looks of it, he's up to no good. So this is probably to help him do something illegal or something to rob the Empire. It's... Is this some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, robbing from the rich to distribute to the poor? Uh, we don't know. But we hear about a team, and immediately the trailer shows us who is going to be part of that team. Um, one, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, something strange about the outcropping where this happens. There seem, they seem to be on a hill close to the sea, and you've got these strange, like, um, uh, stone spikes uh, and and but there are little metal rings on top of them, almost as if they're they're they've been uh, 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 carried on by the rings, and then they've been lifted and placed there. But there are also some hieroglyphs on on these stones. It's unclear what this is. We may not even get to know why the place looks like that. Star Wars often does that, and just gives you the sense that you're in a used universe, and there's a history, but. This particular movie will not even tell us what the history of that place is. doesn't matter. doesn't really matter at this point in the trailer either. What matters is that we get to know the other team members. And they, they are, first of all, Kira, which we've already seen uh, in the chase, uh, in the car chase, uh, next to a droid, L337 or L337. Um, this is a motion-captured character played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Um, and this is the first time that we see this droid. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the introduction of Kira is also very impressive. She uh, is leaving the Falcon, so she's coming down the um, the ramp. But the ramp looks different from the ramp that we know of the old Falcon, especially the circular thing that's above the ramp looks much sleeker, much newer in this scene than we've seen it uh, in other movies. But that's interesting that she leaves the Falcon. Does that mean that she's part of the Falcon? Is, is she somehow in cahoots with uh, Lando? And is the droid also part of the team? Like, a, is there a party of three um, that owns the Falcon at this point in the story? I don't know. What I do see is that she looks very regal, almost imperial. She's got this, like, this white uniform-like suit. And then she's got this red cape that immediately made me think of... Uh, what, what's his name, Krennic, or the the, the um, Imperial dude in, uh, in, in Rogue One? Um, so she's got this nice cape. It does absolutely convey that she's not just a girl. She's, I don't know, perhaps royal. So that could kind of tie in with the backstory of Kessel, that she's part of the royal family on, on Kessel. That she's rich or powerful or well, she's, she's not definitely, definitely not the company for a smuggler. Another thing theory. What if she is the one who gives the orders? What if she is ultimately the quest giver in this story? That she's from this, I don't know, royal clan and she somehow has enlisted uh, a Beckett with his team to do a heist for her. I'm just speculating, but it, I wouldn't be surprised if, if she is a major character in the sense that she's not just a, a, a friend of Han or Lando, but she's much more like the the person who puts in motion what's going to happen next. Um, then, uh, also part of the team, very quick introductions. Uh, we see uh, Lando, played by Donald Glover, looking relaxed, smiling. He's uh, sporting this small beard. Seems to me like the perfect Lando. We haven't heard much. Uh, we don't see that much of him. Perhaps they'll save that for later trailers. But he just looks the part. And, uh, and I'm excited about that. And then we see uh, a, a very interesting other character, um, Val. Uh, it's uh, I had, hadn't heard about her character before. She's played by uh, Thandie Newton. 
Um, so she's also joining the team. And then there is this very strange alien pilot, four-armed, and I'm thinking that could be Warwick Davis. Uh, Warwick Davis has a role in this movie. He's had roles in almost all the Star Wars movies. Of course, he's the original um, uh, uh, Wicket uh, in, in The Last Jedi, in um, The Return of the Jedi. Uh, and, and so he, perhaps he's this pilot. I don't know. I like it, though. It's a very diverse uh, team. And then that's where the story continues. We see Han as a silhouette entering what at first looks like a cantina scene. But if you look more closely, you can tell that this is the same space where Lando is sitting. Well, we know that Lando is a gambler and that Han will also start to gamble. So this is, I think, an illegal gambling casino. This could be also at the harbor or I don't know. Uh, it looks kind of gloomy and dark, and but you see lots of aliens uh, around a table. They're playing, and there are some people around it watching. Um, it, it has this almost a feel of a, like an illegal dogfight arena or something like that. Um, and, and Han is just standing there. So, And then we move to the next scene, and it's uh, uh, on the winter planet again, or outside in the cold. And Beckett asks... Han, if he's going to be part of the team, are you joining? And Chewie roars, and Han translates, that, that's, a, that's a yes. So we already established that Han understands Wookiee speak. Um, so this invitation, are you joining, could also kind of refer to the previous scene in which Han is standing there, and the invitation is, are you going to gamble too? And we know from the backstory that that is how he gets the Falcon. So interesting. Uh, there's a lot going on in this trailer. Um, and then we see, of course, Beckett and Han coming to an agreement. He's going to join the team. And then we switch to the Falcon. And this is, again, uh, uh, clearly a moment where the Falcon is not yet Han's Falcon. We see Lando at the helm. We see L-337 as the co-pilot. They're giving each other the hand sign. Um, and immediately they go into hyperspace. In the, in the back seat. Uh, we see Han sitting there. So, could it be is Kira in the cockpit? I don't. I don't think so. Or at least we don't see her yet. Uh, but perhaps those three were the original owners or users of the Falcon, and Han is now on board. And so they're going into hyperspace. Is this the famous Kessel Run? Is this the moment where? Lando kind of shows off what the Falcon can do, and then later on we'll see Han improving on that record. There's definitely something like that that's being set up here in this space. Very interesting. We will see the Falcon later on again in the trailer, but this time it will be Han and Chewie who will be at the helm. Um, so then we see uh, uh, something very different, a new environment. This may not. This is probably my least favorite uh, environment uh, in the in the trailer and in the, some of the photos that we've seen and the behind the scenes stuff. It, this kind of looks like a dance club. It's a bit hazy. It doesn't look particularly nice or colorful. There is this uh, R two unit serving drinks. I think it's kind of reminiscent of uh, what R two did on the uh, barge of um, uh, in in the Return of the Jedi. Um, we see this dancer, a singer with a float floating alien in yellow fluid that's probably singing along. And, and I wonder, is this happening on a boat? It has a feeling of like a, a club inside a, a boat, like a cruise ship or something like that. Uh, again, just a guess. But uh, I don't really particularly like this environment. Then we see that Kira is there too. She turns around probably towards Han. And again, she looks very classy, very rich. She's in control. So again, seems to confirm the hunch that I have that she may be the one who sets in motion the heist or whatever illegal plan Beckett is, is trying to prepare with his, uh, with his team. Then we're back at the beach. Very different scene. We see Han in a kind of like a Western uh, situation versus the evil guys. And a main villain. This is this is the first time that we see a true villain, classic Star Wars villain with a mask, uh, a spare. He looks very tribal. Uh, definitely not the kind of Kylo Ren vibe. Although the the mask looks a bit like some of the stuff that we know from the expanded universe. Um, so they're definitely kind of hinting at that. Han is reaching for his blaster, Western style, but also it also reminds us 
of Indiana Jones. You know, that famous scene with the guy with the sword and doing all the movements and then just Han taking out his gun and just shooting the guy. That totally reminded me of that. Is probably on purpose that they try to evoke the classic Harrison Ford visual visual vocabulary, uh, if you were. So that is uh, that's that scene. Uh, we will see some more of those bad guys later on. Uh, we see a, a a wider shot, and there are a lot of other aliens or masks. I, I assume that these are aliens, but they're also humanoid uh, people with weapons standing behind the, the the main guy, the main evil guy. Uh, there, it's definitely on the beach. There is a settlement, very primitive settlement, almost a camp in the background. Are these guys bounty hunters? They're definitely uh, trying to prevent Han and per- probably also the others from uh, from getting away. Uh, so there's going to be this confrontation uh, when all of a sudden the movie seems to be a bit like a Western, which I think totally fits Han Solo's backstory. Um, then we go to uh, like the inside of a ship or a hangar or whatever. It's unclear. Um, and there is a hooded figure with a big black mantle fighting some droids, apparently. But it's not the same guy. If you freeze frame, it's not the same bad guy as we saw outside. So this may be some of one of the other bounty hunters. I'll just call them bounty hunters for the moment. But it definitely signals trouble. You know, the Han is going to gamble. They're 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 ready for an adventure, and now we've got the threshold guards. You know, the people that will prevent them. So those have to be conquered. Uh, again, it's classic narrative structure um, that is used almost in every Star Wars movie. Then we see L-337 among explosions. That definitely means that, the well, things are going wrong. And, uh, and then we switch to a, a CGI shot of a cargo ship. I assume it's a cargo ship. It seems, seems to carry this big uh, metal container. Um, and some other smaller ships or even probably just remote rockets or something are also towing this this big container. Um, and then it, the container detaches from the main uh, cargo ship. And I'm thinking if this is on Kessel, then what's in that container? Could it be spice? Could that be what they're trying to smuggle out? Um, who's in the in the cargo ship? Could that be... Could that be Han or Orlando or I don't know? Um, and why is, he, is, it, is the container detaching? Well, we may get an ex- explanation later on. Then we see, we go back to the tent. Seems to be part of that small village or that encampment that we saw earlier on in the confrontation with the bounty hunters. Uh, and Kira is talking to Han. Um, are the bad guys part of her entourage? Is this when Han is captured or I don't know, does she intervene? Um, we then go to an intense flying scene. We see Han, um, in, I'm not sure if this is in the cockpit of the Falcon or another ship. This could actually be in the cargo ship that we just see. And we see Han struggling and, and uh, looking very intense. Again, I think this is part of the kind of the Harrison Ford vocabulary. They try to, to channel that intensity of Harrison Ford. You know, that, that when he's angry, he's like, yeah. I, I don't know. I just thought it again. They they try to make us think of Harrison Ford in in that particular scene. Um, then we go back immediately to um, the outside, and we see a massive explosion. Um, we see the cargo ship getting away, so that kind of tells me that the previous shot is also Han in that cargo ship, and it looks like the the explosion is 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 happening in in the water of a sea or something like that. So that could be the harbor that we saw earlier on. And it almost looks as if perhaps it was a bomb in the container and and Han just kind of cut the ties to, so it exploded below him and he he got away. Um, I don't know why, but it it just looks Star Wars. Um, Then we go back to the conversation between Han and Kira in the tent. And uh, then Kira says, I'm probably the only one who knows what you really are. She doesn't say who you really are, but what you really are. And then Han, this is one of the f- uh, few scenes in which we see him really acting a little bit. Han is a bit uncertain. He's pretending to be cool. And he's like, well, uh, what's that? But we don't get a final answer. Kira doesn't say what she has in mind. But then we switch to the logo of the movie. 
and says solo. So perhaps what she's going to say is, I know what you are. You're solo. You're a solo player. You're not a team player. I don't know. It's just one of those strange moments in the trailer where I think I'm, I I think they're trying to convey something. I'm not sure if it works in this trailer. Um, I think the payoff in the Super Bowl trailer was better. Where is who? Uh, so what's your name? And then it says you sh they show the logo solo. In this scene, it feels a little bit forced. But anyway, this is another moment. You have in the trailer, you always have these little uh, interruptions where they try to tell you this is this is what the movie is called this is when it will be in cinema etc um then then things go in overdrive because it, of course the, the star wars trailer needs to have a build-up and now we get to the one of the big action scenes in the movie itself we see a new looking falcon escaping a star destroyer in a space storm we'd already seen a glimpse of this amazing looking scene with this menacing star destroyer and then surrounded by these clouds in space and it's like there's lightning and who knows what amazing shot the falcon looks dramatically different from the falcon that we know and this of course harkens back to one of the quotes in the original star wars movies where lando and han are talking about it and it's like what did you do to my ship well now we know what happened what han did to the ship he completely changed the front of the ship so you've got these two protrusions in the original falcon and they seem to they seem to be melded into a v shape and the the entire ship looks much more like a racing ship like it's more streamlined and so yeah, I, I thought it was a brilliant way to show us, to give the Falcon, who is definitely one of the Star Wars characters, it's not just a ship, it's a character, to give the ship a backstory, to give the ship a personal history, going from this sleek-looking race ship that's amazing, that's streamlined, to this kind of bulky, uh, awful, like, you came in that, you're braver than I thought, kind of ship. So I love, I love, love, love what they did with the Falcon. Uh, so we see the Falcon escaping the Star Destroyers, chased by a TIE fighter that we've never seen before, and some regular ones. So of course, that's also for the toys and for the Legos. You need to have new ships and new costumes and new troopers. But anyway, I'm not complaining. And uh, and this time we we go to the to the cockpit. This time Han is the pilot, and Chewie is the co-pilot, and. A scared-looking Lando is in the back seat, and Kira is also on board. And so this is where Han has taken possession of the Falcon, and he's flying this thing. And he's, of course, in trouble. He's always in trouble, right? And so we see asteroids, lightning. Um, there's this awesome maneuver, which looks very, I don't know, physical, where he's like giving a, a he's punching almost the, the steering wheel of the Falcon, and then it swivels around and hits the TIE fighter, and exp it explodes. Uh, amazing uh, steering. It's, a, it's Han showing that he is the best pilot in the galaxy. He reached his goal. And then, of course, you get a classic, again, Harrison Ford type of, of scene where Han turns around and he tells him, well, uh, you know, for a moment I thought this was going the wrong way, but we're fine, we're fine. And I was thinking this also may have a meta meaning. There may be a very specific reason that they put this particular phrase in the trailer because there was a lot of uh, negative vibe around this movie and people were like oh it's a disaster there were rumors of of uh, uh, uh the, the uh, actor playing han uh, not being able to act and they had to hire an acting coach it was a lot of doom and gloom about this movie it's almost as if the makers of the trailer want to say you know for a moment we thought this is not going the right way or you may have thought this is not going the right way but you know it's gonna be fine and of course <laughs> I hope this is not going to be the case for the movie, but all hell breaks loose uh, because all of a sudden we see these massive tentacles surrounded by lightning and that there seems to be this massive space creature that is that is uh, almost destroying the Falcon and it takes a lot of uh, uh, expert piloting of Han to get away and to escape. And it's again an awesome scene where, where Lando is like, oh, <laughs> totally in shock. A uh, brilliant, brilliant scene. I wasn't really mm, the the delivery of the line. Uh, again, it, it's a different actor, and we, we keep wanting to hear Harrison Ford's voice and his style and his type of delivery. This movie will not give us that. That's pretty clear. 
but it's still, you know, in tone, it's very much like the Han Solo, like Han Solo would react. I'm just not sure if the actor, you know, can deliver what we all want. And just, just give us a younger Harrison Ford. We can't have that. So we'll just have to live with that. Anyway, but it's a minor niggle because the rest is cool and definitely uh, uh, better than we thought, than I thought. So we see, um, uh, what is it? The big tentacles uh, almost looks like a big space version of the Sarlacc creature, where later on in the CGI editions uh, by, Luke, by George Lucas, they added extra tentacles. So perhaps now later on when we will see the Sarlacc creature, we may empathize even more with Han Solo. It's like, ah, he's been in this situation before, <laughs> in a similar situation. It also made me think, of course, of that space slug uh, in Empire Strikes Back where they try to escape. And uh, there are meteors there as well, or what is it, asteroids. Um, it, it definitely also harkens back to those classic scenes. Um, and that's what a trailer is supposed to do. It's ha it has to reassure us, has to give us that nostalgic feeling, at least the older Star Wars fans. Of, ah, this is going to feel like Star Wars. That's all we want to know. And then we'll just buy the ticket and go see the movie. Or once or twice or three times or four times or five times. <laughs> so, um, and that's that's where it ends. That's that's the end of this particular uh, uh, trailer. Um, again, this may also be part of the Kessel Run or perhaps accidentally Han will now break Lando's record. I'm just speculating, so don't mind me. Uh, that's what I like to do. I can't keep myself from doing that. Then let's talk a little bit about the um, additional scenes in the Super Bowl TV spot. Uh, by the way, the final thing that we see in this trailer, of course, is Memorial Day. That's the day that this movie will uh, will will premiere, um, and that's very soon. We don't have to wait very long, and that's a that's a good thing. Um, the uh, Super Bowl trailer has a number of scenes that are similar to this one, but also a lot of extra material, which I didn't expect. We see um, the the probably part of a flashback in which a young Han Solo, and he's wearing this weird goofy hat is applying for the imperial army or flight school um and he's being interviewed by this uh, uh imperial officer uh and so what do you want to do well i want to make a difference i want to become the best pilot in the galaxy so immediately you see his um <laughs> overestimating himself all the time you know um and 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 the that particular trailer uh switches back and forth between that interview for his application and his uh, and that that car chase uh, earlier on, so we see that he's a good pilot. Well, at least he's a good pilot of his car. So, kind of makes sense that he also wants to fly a ship with the same uh, the same pizzazz. Um, then this short trailer shows us another cool shot of the destroyer, the star destroyer in the mist. Uh, looks even cooler, I think. We um, uh, there are more shots of the harbor chase. And then we go to a scene that we haven't seen in the official trailer, and I thought it was an amazing scene. Uh, it shows you a cool transport train on the winter planet, and it's on rails, and it's got um, uh, both underneath the rails and on top of the rails. It's got like this, this I don't know, just these big wagons, uh, uh, and it's a definitely an industrial train. This is not for passengers, even though the train has some passengers, because on top of that train, there's a fight going on. A classic trope, of course, in a lot of movies, a fight on top of a train. How many times have we seen that in a James Bond movie or or a Bourne movie or whatever? Here it's taking place in Star Wars, but the guy fighting the bad, the bad guy is the one from the beach. It's the main villain or the main bounty hunter, but he's not fighting Han Solo. He's fighting what I think is Beckett with a uh, weird glasses on so um so beckett too may could this be the moment that i don't know beckett gets killed or something and han is to, because of course beckett is a teacher he's a tutor so he's supposed to fade away and the pupil now has to surpass the master right isn't that what yoda told us in uh, in the last jedi so i, I don't know it's like i've got a bad feeling about that um and so but it was a very very cool scene then we switch to Lando, and he's just standing there in his fur coat. Looks very similar to the fur coat that um, Han is is wearing. May even be the the same fur coat. Is Han winning the fur coat as well? <laughs> Next to the Falcon, that would be 
humiliating, I think, for, for Lando. But anyway, he's just standing there in a cold environment. Then we see Han in a prison cell, uh, and he's been asked, being asked his name, your name, Han Solo. Uh, it's kind of the Bond, James Bond moment. Uh, but the Han Solo, we don't hear him say it. I think we see the logo. Um, and then that particular small short trailer ends with Chewie putting his hand on Han's shoulder. And this time, there, Han is not overlooking the, the mountains, like we saw in the, in the big trailer, but he's overlooking the sea. So could this be towards the end of the movie? Seems like a nice scene for the, for the end. Um, so that's, that's my analysis. That's what I have been able to uh, discover in this trailer. Um, I'd love to hear if I've missed anything, if you have any thoughts, if you have anything to add to this. I'd love to hear from you. Just post it in the comments. Let me know. Um, uh, final thoughts. Again, this looks so much better than I thought it would look. This gives me hope for this movie. I've got a good feeling about this. Uh, the only thing we'll all have to somehow process, and that's why I'm so happy that we finally see this trailer with Alden uh, Ehrenreich as Han Solo. The sooner we get used to him being Han Solo at a younger age, the, the sooner we can enjoy the story. So let's all get over this and just give him a chance to do what he, what he does. Um, there is no way to rejuvenate Har Harrison Ford, and we definitely don't want to have a CGI young version of Harrison playing a younger version of himself. That would be horrible. So let's just deal with it. But I think story-wise, as I've been able hopefully to... Uh, convey a little bit in this video, in this in this analysis, is story-wise. I think this this uh, has a lot of excellent beats, and it sounds like classic Star Wars. It feels like classic Star Wars, and we get to see a lot of the things that we heard about in the existing canon, but we've never seen it with our own eyes. So I can't wait to see more. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this may become part of a longer. Uh, standalone series that I will do with Star Wars discussions. I enjoy this. I just, I miss this. Just being able to talk Star Wars for a little bit more than three minutes as I do in my daily breakfast videos. So yeah, just keep an eye on uh, on the news over at Tridio.com and uh, this may actually become a standalone new Star Wars series, which I may actually call that Star Wars Priest because that's who I am. That's why, how a lot of Star Wars fans know me. All right, I'm signing off. I'm Father Roderick, the Star Wars priest. <laughs> the Star Wars priest. May the Force be with you.